Good morning, Borsho. Good morning, Crowdsourcing Week. I'm really sorry I cannot be there today with you, but I'm um, really happy to share my knowledge that I was gathering the last three years through European projects and at the same time working very much in the city administration uh, to make crowdsourcing happen. So what I'm doing in my current work is actually connecting, connecting different um, communities to the city hall. And these are technological society, um, particularly coders, hackers that are building new technology for the city, uh, for cities and citizens. I also work a lot with um, Open Knowledge Foundation that is actually a network of um, highly knowledgeable tech uh, people, uh, but also with innovation agencies like the VAC Society in Amsterdam that is working um, on new technologies, working in a concept of fab labs, living labs, engaging users, having the service design, um, understanding the demands and needs of their citizens. And at the same time, I also like to work and connect to the city of very much the startup boot camps that are actually fostering business. Um, I'm advocating for open data because I think cities deserve at the end uh, transparency and citizens also need to know what kind of decisions are being made up and um, how to get the best out of it by city data. Um, open innovation is my field, my policy field, which means that we actually just can incubate uh, innovation if we are also including the most important external stakeholders. And crowdsourcing is one way to operate uh, on this open innovation field that I really like. Uh, we introduced several crowdsourcing platforms in the recent years. And um, in my work, I also like to emphasize the importance of civic commons. Civic commons are actually standards that are making use of um, interoperable interfaces between cities, try to make sure that we don't build the same technology from the scratch on, but we try to reuse existing tools, uh, transferring them from one city to another one. For example, Helsinki is building a transportation app that is using the same interface as Manchester is using, so it means a huge amount of time saving, resource savings, um, and in my field, I really like to work from the concept of open source apps, civic apps, <coughs> that are actually uh, offering the opportunity to reuse them, to build um, on them a new layer. Uh, and as I told you, startups and, and uh, so using these technologies are also meaning that there is a new emergent layer of creativity in the cities, uh, small scale enterprises that would like to have the cities because they are agile, they really uh, also a bit voluntary, but they also can foster business. So I really like to, to take care of this group to make them important. Uh, I'm dreaming of a city that is very futuristic and uh, sometimes not manageable, but still uh, very important to have this horizon, this uh, dream in our head that makes the cities um, transformative, adaptive to new technology, participative and agile. Agile because we can't make leapfrogs, but step by step we can make very nice projects and make uh, decision makers understand, for example, how important crowdsourcing is in terms of local policy making. Uh, Amsterdam is also fortunate, why are we fortunate? Because we are blessed with a very rich uh, civic innovation ecosystem consisting of a very strong um, layer of um, hackers, coders, uh, that are actually a little bit operating um, uh, outside of the borders that are allowed or they hack exciting data sets. Um, but they also build very useful applications uh, that help citizens to understand how transparent cities can be. Um, another very important component is the city governance. Amsterdam is quite open-minded, free-spirited to let uh, to let us experiment with new technologies where we not uh, exactly know what the outcome will be, but we start because it's exciting. Uh, these were the project of Code for Europe uh, City Service Development Kit with Helsinki and Open Cities about crowdsourcing. Um, um, so this layer is very important because it gives you the entrepreneurship that you need to experiment with uh, engaging citizens, um, building platforms, 
making hackathons, having awarding ceremonies to highlight uh, one winner idea. Um, so all this um, togetherness with this unique uh, components in this ecosystem enables us to really create uh, some added value. Um, but we also look outwards, not just in the city or Amsterdam. Uh, we look, I would like to work very much with Open Knowledge Foundation that is a very rich network of um, um, technological uh, people that are coding very well, that are understanding the needs of the cities, that are mitigating between city governance and tech society. Also, they have a very nice initiative called um, School of Data that is nothing else than training civil servants how to make useful uh, uh, visualizations on open data um, and how to structure open data. Open Data Institute also for me is a very big inspirator in London uh, that is trying to uh, make a global network of nodes um, that are actually sharing uh, the barriers, you know, how to break through with open data, but how to, uh, there are some trips and, and tricks. And this is very important that these networks are sharing this in a non-proprietary way. You don't really have to buy them. You, it's not, not about the selling, it's about really sharing. Future Cities Catapult is also for me very important because they, in the UK, foster a very high speed innovation, leveraging on new technology, but also understanding the shrinking budget of cities where we are operating, but also the demands of the city hall and the citizens that are actually 24 hours connected. And network democracy is a self-organizing, uh, actually it's from Amsterdam, uh, self-organizing uh, bottom-up grassroots uh, innovation that try to understand citizens, what is democracy, how the emerging tools can help them to uh, make a more democratic uh, society. Uh, I like to use this model of an apple. Our innovation ecosystem is comparable to a radiant, fresh apple. And this has actually a good blood circulation because we have very complementary partners in this innovation ecosystem. So the city is not doing it on its own. Um, we work with this ecosystem uh, consisting of um, knowledge institutions, startup accelerators, um, innovation agencies. We have a very high level of information sharing and uh, almost no competition. It's more about co-creation. Uh, but the city is not an exclusive owner of these complex urban challenges. We are just one important stakeholder. Um, so it's important to understand that um, uh, there are also enablers we need in this ecosystem and one of them is Europe, the knowledge of the European projects and the technology. And the second one is uh, Amsterdam Economic Board that is pushing very much uh, the idea of uh, public-private partnerships, making projects, um, and uh, we are asking them to help us with uh, what they learn in these projects and how to leverage on these learnings. So if you zoom in the apple, you can see that the uh, up, very up is the city of Amsterdam, the governed city of Amsterdam, that is um, actually helping to understand the complex urban challenges the Chief Technology Office is doing nothing else but navigate, uh, try to lobby, and try to organize events around these themes, and try to bind these partners in the ecosystem together. And where we give a place for crowdsourcing is within the platforms, because we think that cities have to combat with urban challenges. We have to struggle with very complex problems, with waste management, with congestion, with just too many tourists in Amsterdam. And these are really complex problems. There are many stakeholders that are owning these problems. And uh, what we try to uh, bring in this um, approach that you can work from labs, user labs, where you can involve uh, users. Like one important um, 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 living lab in Amsterdam is the three-dimensional printing, where we actually help users, citizens, to build, to print their own bricks for panels for a house that is going to be comparable to a canal house, how it looked like in the medieval times. Um, the second one is platforms. We're really introducing right now two very strong, uh, actually one very strong, um, uh, robust platform in Amsterdam called Change by Us. And the local version is Idee for your build, Idea for your neighborhood. 
that is actually making possible that citizens can post ideas, any kind of ideas, or the city can post an urban challenge. And we can also make sure there is a resource finding mechanism behind this uh, crowdsourcing platform. And we also like to work on the concepts of urban challenges, like having one exciting question on um, sensors in the cities or how to set up uh, waste management. And there is an institution called Think uh, that is helping uh, creative leadership in Amsterdam and working um, on the concept of challenges. Um, and if you see this apple on the left side, the city, city innovation ecosystem is consisting of, um, so this is actually what I call the feeding mechanism, because urban challenges are existing, but we need kind of counter partner that is helping us to understand the complexity, to reflect on these uh, questions. And these are the innovation agencies, um, social innovators like Kennisland, uh, Waag, um, Amsterdam is a community of uh, app developers uh, and very important not to forget to mention the Amsterdam Metropolitan Solutions that's going to be a new university in Amsterdam working on the concepts of um, how to sort out urban challenges uh, in terms of sustainability, big data uh, and circular economy. So all these partners together bring the best available knowledge and I'm very happy that now we can address crowdsourcing uh, for the very first time in Amsterdam really centrally. Um, so if we think about civic innovation, I always ask how, what are the tools we should use, um, how to start with, what are the steering instruments for city governors. One very important is the platforms. Yes, digital platforms are crucial. They should look good, they should be easy to understand, uh, they should be engaging. But next to the platforms, one very important level is arranging offline meetups. These meetups are really crucial uh, to engage elderly people, engage people that are not always online uh, and also who are liking uh, to have a live discussion. And uh, events are also very important, like one-time event, a big innovation festival, like uh, Manchester is doing very nicely, um, Future Everything, that is much more than just an event. It's really a matchmaking of um, uh, civic innovators, uh, making projects, uh, publishing uh, exciting articles. And uh, the last layer in civic innovation, I think it's mobile apps. Mobile apps, uh, can really help us to react fast uh, on city, civic uh, innovation questions, um, to transmit knowledge, uh, to, to, to be around in this uh, urban challenges uh, scene. Uh, so just um, when we talk about crowdsourcing, how did we start or what we've learned, I'm going to sum it up for you shortly. But most importantly, currently we are working with a um, Code for Europe project that is uh, actually uh, using an open source uh, interface from New York. This is in New York, a very easy to use uh, interface where you can put a post-it addressing what kind of problem would you like to address. And behind, um, behind uh, this uh, um, um, front, um, there is a very exciting resource matchmaking mechanism that makes sure if you address an idea that will be channeled through a mechanism that will find either spot, volunteers or money to make it happen. Lisbon also has replicated this uh, open source uh, tool for participatory budgeting. The city was asking what do the citizens want um, if they would have one million euro available. They all addressed um, uh, unanimously uh, uh, the idea of having a f um, free Wi-Fi in the city. So that was very useful to use this interface. Um, Amsterdam is just launching the idea for your neighborhood, ID for your good, with the very same interface. Uh, we still empty, but next week we will uh, go also in the social media and try to engage people to post their ideas. So that's a very exciting journey for us. Also, because it's not just um, posting your idea, but there is a um, a crowdfunding uh, part uh, attached to it, and this is the For Your Beard, uh, um, For Your Neighborhood, 
the local crowdsourcing platform uh, already operating uh, since a year in Amsterdam and they managed to gather 300,000 euro uh, to arrange local markets, local cafes, uh, things that are really matter, uh, th things that are really important for uh, inhabitants in one neighborhood. But my learnings is during this crowdsourcing experiment that catchy interface is really just not enough. It's nice to have, but it's not enough. We have to um, reserve resources and capacities to promote these crowdsourcing uh, projects also offline. Offline. Uh, so you see this building, the Paka is this Weicher. This is our innovation community in Amsterdam where 600 people are constant members. They show up and they discuss uh, civic innovation issues with um, designers, architects, uh, entrepreneurs. So this is a very important, crucial component in crowdsourcing. Try to crowdsource also offline with these meetings. Um, City Hall is also opening up in terms of communication that is not necessarily crowdsourcing, but um, a little bit uh, on the boundary with it. Um, you see the, um, this, this uh, project, Amsterdam uh, North and South Line, it's a, met, a subway um, construction going on since a very long time. And there were many complaints because some uh, houses got cracks in the wall. And this is actually the communication, how the city is arranging. They, they want to make the complaints transparent. So citizens are actually involved and uh, invited to put their photos of damages or discuss issues or even positive things. And the city hall is also actively showing what's going on on the next weeks with the construction. So this is to me already a big, big uh, step ahead in terms of transparency. Code for Europe was the project I mentioned. We built the first open source crowdsourcing platform. We were working with fellows that were temporarily hired to cities. And they went to the city and they said, uh, we can use our knowledge and we would like to build mobile apps that can be reused between uh, more European cities like Helsinki, Manchester, Rome, Barcelona, Amsterdam. One of the problems the fellows were uh, sorting out in Amsterdam was, I mentioned, the huge problem, the congestion in the central area of Amsterdam. There are just too many, too many pedestrians due to the tourism, uh, uh, touristic attractions in several districts. Um, this picture was taken actually in the red light district in Amsterdam. So the question was uh, that the fellows, we asked the fellows how to make sure that we can attract these tourists also to different areas. And they made this app, Take a Hike, that is also open source, of course, uh, easy to replicate uh, on an event basis. And it's a scavenger games, game where they learn uh, actually um, uh, tourists how to discover other areas in the city and they can also collect some uh, awards that uh, later you can uh, exchange it to a cinema ticket or something um, relevant to them. But they really have a kind of uh, scavenger game that they are invited to discover uh, a little bit less known areas in the city. Uh, what we also built in Code for Europe project is the first app repository in the Europe um, where cities can demonstrate what they build already on civic apps. And this is also an open invitation for you. Check it out, uh, civicexchange.eu. What is already available before procuring and before, before just giving uh, an assignment to build civic apps? Because there is so much uh, available that we can reuse. Uh, we also started the crowdsourcing experiment three years ago with Open Cities projects that was actually teaching us how to make an own crowdsourcing platform within the city hall where we can put policy questions also. Um, um, we were really helping um, citizens to have like a, a central question and they could co-create, they could discuss. Uh, there was much capacity put on these platforms, uh, open cities platform in Amsterdam to create discussions. 
And what we also have done is active policymaker representation on this platform. So you will see uh, this person, Peter Hillhorst, he was very, he was standing up front and saying, I am advocating this challenge and I would like the youth uh, unemployment to be tackled by several trainers and I would like you, the crowd, to help me how to find the best name for this trainer. It generated 400 ideas. It was very well attended, this platform, but it's also because we really put their political representation. Um, not just the city hall is making crowdsourcing platform. This is a petition collector. Uh, it's being done by Network Democracy. This is the self-organizing community in Amsterdam that is actually uh, um, collecting um, not ideas necessarily, but more uh, objections, uh, petitions like uh, you are against that the trees will be cut in front of your house or a statue will be uh, demolished. Um, anyhow, they manage sometimes to have uh, 10,000 signatures from one project, but strangely enough, it's not connected to the city hall. So there is just so much knowledge available and willingness from citizens. But the question for us, for city governors, how to connect it to the local uh, governance? Uh, so if I'm reflecting on my story, very important question, do we want civic innovation platforms? Absolutely, my answer, yes. Uh, but we need commitment from a very uh, high political level. Uh, we need incentives. We have to put incentives to help citizens to participate and to make also the city governors visible, not to be anonymous, but be recognizable, not with avatar, but we, with a name we can put outside and that citizens know who is behind this black machine of the city governance and really try to save some money on interface um, to building apps because you can reuse open source uh, interfaces. There is just so much interoperability between cities uh, and use social media uh, for seeding, for giving notice that the city is crowdsourcing. Uh, each city has so much young people uh, that are really agile and they want to use social media, so let them do that, use them. Look for European collaboration. There are many useful programs. You have a Future Internet, Future, uh, FIVR, Horizon 22 Innovation Scheme gives many, many opportunities for crowdsourcing platforms for cities. European Network of Living Lab and EuroCities. And create local heroes for civic engagement on a politic, uh, policy level. It's always good to put an ambassador like the uh, Elderman of um, Economic Affairs is uh, promoting this theme and make some publications on it. It will really help. Um, it's also important to have peer-reviewed platforms to kind of try to work with Open Edge Foundation, with any other uh, free-spirited organizations that are uh, helping us to test solutions. And, um, and try to take a risk um, defrosting a part of the budget for service design for cities, to understand the needs of citizens, um, problems, uh, how to get them engaged, um, and do it citywide. The platform that we are introducing in Amsterdam, you saw this interface uh, change by us, is citywide. We don't do it in one borough, we do it one big transversal uh, platform where citizens can post ideas, entrepreneurs, but also tourists. So where, uh, as a very much ending in my story, um, I think crowdsourcing is really not just an ICT tool. It's very much a paradigm shift. Uh, toward, we really move towards government um, as a platform instead of a top-down service provider. So just to close my presentation, Civic Tech Accelerator is a new project I am currently involved with. Uh, promoting the same concept of civic innovation and helping uh, entrepreneurs to use it. And um, I would be very glad to work with you and um, thank you so much for this opportunity to share my knowledge. I hope you could follow it and uh, I'm very happy to work with Warsaw or with any of you. So just uh, mail me or um, follow me on Twitter and um, I wish you a very nice conference day and networking event. Thank you so much. Bye.